Okay, my dears, today we have the story of stones, bones, and petroglyphs uh, in the reading book. But before that, we are going to watch this video together and have some, uh, some ideas from it. So let's go here. Why is it important to learn about America's past? If you look up at the cliffs that tower over canyons in the southwestern United States, you might just see the remains of an ancient dwelling. The Pueblo people who lived here thousands of years ago built their homes in the giant alcoves carved into these cliffs. You see, this is alcove, extra space inside the mountain. And they built their houses in here. You see how their houses are inside the mountain? This is magnificent. Archaeologists are studying the various artifacts found preserved in many of these ruins in order to gather clues about how the ancient people lived. From potsherds or pottery pieces found around the ruins, scientists may learn what food the ancient people ate and how it was prepared. The way homes were laid out tell us about family and community structure. Even canals dug near the ruins may tell us how these prehistoric people irrigated their crops. A reconstruction of an ancient dwelling can also give us a good idea about how the ancestral Pueblo people lived. By trying to imitate ancient techniques, scientists learn why they may have built their homes a certain way or how they created these ancient stone dwellings. Studying ancient cultures can give us insight into our past and an appreciation for the people who lived before us. Why do you think it is important to learn about America's past? So, arche archaeologist is the person who studied the rocks. Preserved in like many. One. She studied the rocks, the, the ruins of other, uh, of other uh, people and of other ancient, uh, ancient cultures and ancient people. Tayyip, right now, if these people are studying, for example, the American history and the Native American history, why do you think it's important to study the history of those people? Hmm. Tell me your opinion. Why do you think that? Why do you think it's important? Hi, Malak. To, to learn the future. Excellent. This is a good uh, point of view. She said, we have to know about the past to learn how to react in our future. This is one thing. Huh. Another thing, tell me other ideas. Why do we have to learn other about other people ancient time and their homes and how they live and what they eat? What is it the benefit for us? Hmm. Um, like uh, to get information about the past. Okay. To get information yeah. about the past and maybe to know, maybe one time we will need this information. Maybe right now we have technology, we have all facilities that we need, but maybe in the future something would happen. May Allah forbid, of course, but maybe something will happen that we need this knowledge of those people. I mean, when you look to their places itself, it's so hard to dig a home inside a rock. So how they did that? We want to... Yeah. Know and we have how always say that. Yes, we can have the knowledge that if we need it one day, we can do it. Uh, maybe yeah. the, that they used to um, to have their crops, what kind of crops they eat. And I want you to imagine that some of these people, they lived in the desert in a place that doesn't yeah. have a lot of water or rain. So how they lived, Tayyip, which crops they had. Then when we have this knowledge, maybe we can use it in our own survival. If something happened to our country, maybe we can use it in our survival to do the same crops to make the same homes and to just pass the knowledge for our children. So it's very important to learn about history because without history, you have no present and you have no future. So past is very, very important. Tayyip, let's go right now. Open your books on the page 238 right here. And as we learned before, in every story we have, we have to know what and what and what, who can tell me? The, the junior of the story and the, the, of the, story and the person of the week. Excellent. So we have first genre and then author and then question of the week. So let's write it here. First, we have genre. So what is the genre of this story? Who can tell me? 
The genre is expository text. Expository text. So, ex. Expository text. What does it mean, expository text, dear Lynn? Ayaline, Ayawatin, anybody. What does it mean, expository text? What, miss? Expository yeah, text, miss. what does it mean? Yes, yeah, my love. Uh, okay. It means it gives information about the real world. Look for facts. No, it gives information about the real world. Excellent. Yeah. It gives information about the real world and about the facts that we don't know. And these facts are separated around this in books or maybe in some studies or something. So he is bringing all of this information and put it in one place, in one text. We call it expository text. This information could be about nature, about space, about universe, about uh, animals, about any kind of things that you don't know. So we call it expository text. So who is the writer of this story? By Susan E. Susan E. Goodman. Susan. 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 I will not e. say Goodman. Susan in English. I will say Susan. 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 Like Sarah, we say Sarah in Arabic, but in English we say Sarah. Sarah. So anything that have A, I will make it like a little bit A, like Susan, Sarah. Okay, so but we have some, some names that are different. Like Yasmin, we say Jasmine. Jasmine, yes. Miss like, Ned Goodman, Goodman. Goodman. Goodman? Good. Yeah. Oh. She's a good, good. Her father was a good man, really. Yes, Mr. Goodman. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, her name and is Goodman, yes. Susan E. Goodman, uh, photographed by Michelle uh, Dolittle. And we have the question of the week. Why do you think it's important? Tell me the why question. Is it, why, why is it important to learn about America's past? Why do you think? Why is it important to learn about America? Because it helps us understand how our time is different yeah. from our from their time. Like to learn about our his, uh, history. Our history about our history, or about American history. history. Yeah, and history helps you to see the world around in you like a different way or a new way. Exactly. Yeah, like. Maybe now President Biden, after the two decades, three decades, will be history. Okay. Maybe. Yes, maybe. Maybe, of course. A lot of things can happen in one year. So imagine what can happen in a decade. This is something big. Okay. So we have stones, bones, and petroglyphs digging into Southwest archaeology. And let's go for the expository text together to read it. Uh, to have information about this interesting subject. A long time ago. Chapter 1. A long time ago. Just a minute. After a hot day in his cornfield, the man drops his digging stick and slowly lowers himself over the canyon's edge. Clinging to the wall with his hands, he uses his foot to feel for the holes his people have pecked into the stone. Carefully, he inches down to the village built right into the cliff. For more than a thousand years, Pueblo people lived on mesas, or canyon tops, in part of the American Southwest called the Four Corners, where Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona meet. Suddenly, around A.D. 1200, these people moved into giant alcoves that nature had cut into the middle of the canyon walls. They created their Stone Age apartment buildings by chipping out one stone block after another. To make the mud that held these blocks in place, they carried water hundreds of feet from a spring on the canyon floor. All that work, and they used these buildings for just a few decades. By the year 1300, every Pueblo man, woman, and child had left the Four Corners area. Their fire pits held only ashes. Their fields fed only birds and animals. Their cities stood empty and silent. Wow. So a long time ago, um, people wanted, the, the archaeologists wanted to search about this area in the west of America. 
what they found that the people, the ancient people and the Native Americans who live, lived in that area, they used to live where? They used to live on mesas. What does it mean, mesas? It means like above the mountain or above the hill. يعني in a high place on the hill or a mountain. They used to live above the, 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 the canyons, on the mesas, in high place. But suddenly, before 1,200 1, years ago, okay, before history or before, uh, before Christ, what happened is that those people, they changed their places from living in high mountains and high places to live inside rocks and inside mountains. And suddenly they found they changed their places to live inside a big what? A big alcove inside a mountain. And this alcove that they made, they made it inside a mountain by shipping and cutting some pieces from the mountain and make their houses inside the mountain. And they lived in there just for a few decades. Yeah, and they didn't remain for a long, long time. They remained there for some decades, maybe 50 years, maybe 60 years, okay? Yeah. And then they changed their places again and they stopped living in there and they went again to live in another area. So the people who is studying the archaeology are interested to know what happened at that time to make those people go from the hills and the mountains to live inside alcoves. What dangers maybe they faced or something they faced that they let them go inside the mountain and to live in a secure area like a mountain or inside a rock and to make their houses in that area. And why not to complete living in that place? Yani why, why they didn't complete living in there? Why they just have to go to another area? What happened really? So this is what makes them... <coughs> about that idea more and more to understand it. So let's complete reading by having the other parts. We know where these people went. They moved south into what is now New Mexico and Arizona. But why did they leave the land they had lived in for more than 1,000 years? This is just one question archaeologists at Crow Canyon Archaeological Center in Colorado are trying to answer. Archaeologists study people of the past, and these archaeologists are working to understand who these Puebloans were and how they lived. They excavate or dig in ruins to help build a picture of this ancient world. Now the archaeologists have help. A group of 8th graders from Hannibal Middle School in Hannibal, Missouri, came to Crow Canyon to learn what these scientists already know, and to help them find new answers. Okay. You see these students right here and these students right here. Now the group of um, the group of scientists they want what they want to discover what happened with those people to let them change their places from one place to another and then to leave even that place to go south to Mexico and Arizona. What happened to those people make them change their places like this? So they are curious to have some information and while they are working. They have some guests and some group of students who came from high school and um, in uh, middle school in Hannibal, Missouri, to help them to discover what's going on and what's happened with those people. So these are the students right here. And this is why we make actually uh, a live trip for the students because to go to a place and a live area and to just to live the moment and to try to discover the things that the scientists know, it will give you some idea about the history. It will give you some idea about your own abilities, your own talents, and you can make your own discoveries in a young age. So it will open your mind a big time. So flip the page and let's go for next page. Chapter 2, Gooping Up and Setting Off. Everybody got their hats and sunscreen? Sarah asked. Sarah Kelly and Ken Lanick were two Crow Canyon educators guiding the Hannibal kids through their adventure with archaeology. The kids were getting ready to tour the ruins in Woods Canyon, where they'd be excavating later that week. Don't forget your water bottles, Sarah added. Newcomers have a hard time remembering how much they need to drink around here. 
The land around Four Corners doesn't have sand dunes, but it is like a desert, with plants and trees that can live without much water. Its climate is so dry that sweat evaporates before it can beat up on your skin. That's great for archaeology, because a dry climate helps baskets, bones, even buildings last for hundreds of years. The kids piled into vans and drove past dry grasslands and deep canyons. They saw pinyon pines, cactus, and sagebrush wherever nature chose the landscape, and green fields where farmers watered their crops. If the kids had scratched around one of those sagebrush fields, they might have found a spear point or stone tool. For more than a thousand years, ancient Pueblo people had lived all over this land. We used to call these people the Anasazi, Ken explained, but the Navajo gave them that name, which means enemy of our people. So you can understand why their current relatives don't like it. Since we don't know what they named themselves, we call them the ancestral Puebloans. Everyone out for Woods Canyon," said Sarah as the vans rolled to a stop. "Grab your water bottles and let's go." A few minutes down the path, Ben B stopped and stared at the ground. "I found something," he called out. "Congratulations," said Sarah. "We call these pottery pieces potsherds." You'll see artifacts as you walk along," said Sarah. "It's okay to pick something up to look at it, but mark its place with your foot so you can return it to the right spot. Archaeologists get a lot of information from an item's location. Could it really make much difference if you moved it?" asked Ben B. "Sure. Villages 200 years apart in age can be built just 100 feet from each other," answered Ken. "It can be confusing if you put something from a newer settlement into the older one." And don't forget, taking artifacts from public lands like Woods Canyon is against the law," Sarah added. "Just think about it this way: you can learn a lot from these artifacts because they're still here. If you pick them all up, there wouldn't be any left for your kids or their kids to enjoy. Anyway, archaeology is more than finding neat stuff; it's finding out about the people who left all that neat stuff," added Pat Malia, the teacher who came with them from Hannibal. Okay, now they started their journey, and they went. Into the side, just to dig in that side and to understand the ruins of the ancient people. Now, when they went in there, they said for them, you have to drink some water because the weather in there is so dry and hot because we are in the middle of the desert. So you have to drink your water and to put a sun, um, a sun, uh, a sun block in your face. It's like cream to uh, prevent the sun from hurting your skin. And then while they are uh, working and moving in there, they found what they found some small pieces of pottery. Then the teacher she said for them, "This is potsherds." What is potsherds? She said these are little pieces from the people who lived in there and here, and from their tools and from their stuff. The boy wanted to pick some of them and to take them, and she said, "No, you can't do that because first it's against law to do that because this place goes for for the government who is responsible for this." Another thing is when you take some of the stuff, you um you will leave nothing for your children and grandchildren when they want to learn about this in the future. They will find no ruins and no pieces because you took them all. Another thing when you take from some pieces from area to another and put it in another area, that will make the archaeologists confuse because you will miss their information. So it's better that you leave everything as it is and don't move it. We just study it and bring it back to its place. So don't move it from there. Okay. So now they are going to study about the uh, Anasazi. Anasazi is a tribe of people who lived in that area and who made the alcoves inside the mountain. The Navajo, another tribe of Indians, they used to call those people their enemies. Why? Because remember, the Navajo they used to live inside tents and inside uh, inside certain type of uh, of living. But those people they are living inside houses and they have they have crops. While the Navajo they love animals. They live on animals and they live inside tents. So those people are different, and those people fight those people. So they are enemies for each other. But what happened to them to let them live inside? Those Miss, why don't they love each other? Maybe there's something between them. Of course, there will be some benefit. That's why they are fighting over it. Maybe they are fighting most of the time. Those people、uh, in the history, 
why they don't like each other and fight each other mostly because they fight over the resources what is the resources mostly they fight over water or food animals crops those things sometimes women like this there's there's a many 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 ways and many things make those people hate each other and kill each other and be enemies for each other but mostly is the resources the resources that make people kill each other until now until now the people try to kill each other yeah. over the resources so resources is one main important thing that make people uh, enemies for each other okay let's go right now and complete I'm going to have this part and then to let you read. Okay, my girls? Okay, miss. As the kids scrambled into the canyon, Sarah pointed to some rocks that used to be a tower. Imagining that pile of rubble as a tall building was hard. In fact, the kids walked past many mounds and piles without even noticing them. It takes training to see what used to be. Look carefully, said Sarah, as they all gathered on a cliff. That spot used to be an underground circular room called a kiva. Over there on that cliff is where people built their homes. The kids took a moment to study the canyon. Some noticed how deep it was. Others listened to the wind. Still others tried to imagine the people living there 750 years ago. Wow, you see this area right here? This yeah. area right here, the um, Anasazi, Anasazi people and tribe they used to build their homes and their rooms to store some food right here inside the canyon and inside Must the they mountain they only store food they store food sometimes they make rooms for them sometimes yes. they make a house right here there's a lot of people they like to hang their homes on the mountains through yes, history but the space is very small it's, it's very small and narrow and dangerous actually because this place yeah. this rock is a slippery so if you go and try yeah. to go down, you will slip maybe and fell down. It's very dangerous. And you see how those students, they are sitting, they are sitting away. Yeah. And they are, they are trying to sit, not to stand up because this place is slippery and they might lose their balance and fell down. So imagine and think right now how those people before 750 years ago could build a room or a house inside a place like this what tools did they use and how powerful they were so it it was very very hard and strange thing actually to study about but it's interesting at the same time an ancient pueblo timeline as long as 10,000 years ago people roamed the four corners they gathered wild seeds and cactus fruits and used spears to hunt animals that are now extinct, such as the woolly mammoth. By the year A.D. 1, people in the Four Corners were growing corn and squash and living on the mesa tops in circular houses built with logs and mud. They still hunted, but with bows and arrows. By A.D. 550, they planted beans along with their corn and squash. They stored these foods in baskets and cooked them in clay pots. As time went on, people clustered their homes together in rows of connected rooms. In front, they built kivas for the village to share. They traded with other groups for red pottery and cotton and shell beads that came from what is now Mexico. Over the years, villages grew larger. Some had buildings four stories high. Large plazas built on kiva roofs provided a place to work and visit. By 1150, tens of thousands of people lived in the area. About 1200, villages moved from mesas to alcoves in the middle of cliffs. These new stone cities had towers and kivas and hundreds of rooms. There, people traded and made beautiful pots and weavings and jewelry. By 1300, the villages were empty of voices and laughter. The people were gone. Wrong. So... This is one of the villages that were empty. But before that, before they have villages like this, those people, they used to live in what, as I told you, they used to live on mesas, on the high mountain, on the canyons, over the canyons. 
and they never lived inside mountains or inside alcove. And they used even to uh, build their houses out of mud and logs, not out of stones, okay? And they used to hunt. They used to have their own food like squash and beans. And their life was so nice. But suddenly, suddenly, there was a change on the events that made those people in 1200 AD to change their places from here and to go to another place which is the alcoves inside the mountains and to build their houses right now from stones, not from mud or logs. Now their houses are made stronger than before. It's made of stones and it is inside a protected area. So wh what do you think right now? Do you think maybe they faced something? Yeah. Well, what kind of thing? Well, Tell me. That made them go inside the mountain and make their houses out of, uh, of, of stone? Not out of mud or logs. What do you think happened? Maybe the and they, and then there will from... be something dangerous, and they'll be scared to to go up the the this rock, the big rock, and they want only to go inside, and they want to build the house inside. They don't want to go outside. Yes, this is one maybe, reason, maybe. Yes. What about you, Malak? Huh? The crops stop growing. And and uh, there's no uh, there's no resources. resources. Uh huh. Maybe this is interesting yes. idea actually. That's nice, yeah, Malak. Malak, she's saying that uh, maybe the resources is is finished and they couldn't have crops anymore. There's no water. They then they have to change their place. Maybe this happened and maybe that happened. This is what we are going to learn next time. But before that, I would like to give you like five minutes of reading. So I will pick you one yeah. by one. Let's go, yeah, Watin. As the kids from the scramble. beginning of the story. Yes, you can. Let's go. A long time ago, after a hot day in his in his con in his cornfield, the man cornfield cornfield cornfield. The man, the man drops his digging stick and slowly lowers himself over the canyon's edge, clinging to the wall with his hands. He uses his foot, his foot to feel for the holes his people have picked into the stone. Carefully, he inches down to the to the village built right into the cliff. Excellent. For more than a thousand years, Pueblo people live on knees or canyon tops in a part of American Southwest called the Four Corners, where Co Colorado, 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 New Mexico, Ata and Utah, Arizona, Utah, Utah and Arizona meet. Suddenly, around A.D. Uh, 1200, these people moved into giant alcoves, giant, giant alcoves that nature had cut into the middle of the, of the canyon walls. They created walls. They created their, their Stone Age apartment buildings by shipping out of the stone block one after stone another. block after another uh -huh. to make them to make the mud that held the uh, that held these blocks in place they carried water hundreds of feet from a spring on the canyon flo floor all that work and they uh, all that work and they wow. used these buildings for just a few decades decades Dictate. Excellent. By That's enough. The That's year... enough. Yalla, yalla. Complete. By the year 1300. Lian. Are you there? Oh, okay. I was not um, By the year 1300, every Pablo man, woman, Pueblo, Pueblo and man. Pueblo man, woman, and child had left the four concert, 
corners, corners area. area. And can, can you lower the voice area. a little bit? Yeah, lean, lean. Lower the voice, please, okay. of the mic. Okay, and child had left the four corners area. Their fire... Their fire pit held only ashes. Their fields fed only birds and animals. Their city stood empty and silent. We know where these people went. They moved south into what is now New Mexico and Arizona. But why did they leave the land they had lived in for more than 1,000 years? This is just one question. Archil Archilus Archaeologists. Archaeologists mm -hmm. at Crow Canyon Archaeologists study people of the pace past and these archaeologists work uh, are working to uh, understand who these people pueblo pueblos pueblos where and how they lived they ex Excave, excavate, or dig, excavate or dig in ruins to help build a picture of this accident. Ancient, world. ancient, ancient world. Excellent. That's enough, Yaleen. Yalla, yes. Yamala, complete. And now the archaeologists okay. have help. Now the archaeologists have help. A group of eighth graders from Hannibal Middle School in Hannibal, Missouri. Misery. 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 Mm -hmm. Misery. Um, came to Crow Canyon to learn what these scientists already know and to help them find new answers. Excellent. Roping up and setting off. Everybody got their hats and sunscreen. Everybody got their hats and sunscreen. Sarah asked. Sarah, Kelly, and Ken Lang, Lang, Lanik were to Crow Canyon educator gu guiding the Hannibal kids through their adventure with archaeology. The kids were getting ready for to tour the ruins in Woods, in Woods Canyon, where they'd be excavating. excavating excavating later that week. Excellent. That's enough, Ya yeah, Malak. Excellent reading, my girls. I want you right now to complete read the story by your own and to complete the next part, inshallah. So by Wednesday, we are going to complete to understand the story and what happened in the story. And uh, we are going to take the remaining of it. Okay, do you have any question until now? No. 